My name is Michael Fowler and I'm the director of the Heart Failure Programme here, but I also spend um, a regular rotation month on the cardiac care unit, caring for the large variety of patients that come into that unit, um, usually admitted through the emergency room or transfer from other hospitals with a wide variety of serious heart conditions. The most common cause, in the old days at least, used to be a acute myocardial infarction, what is often referred to as a heart attack. As perhaps we do a better job at managing risk factors for coronary disease, we see more and more patients coming to those units critically ill with other forms of serious heart disease. And perhaps the most common is heart failure, which makes up more and more of the proportion of patients seen on cardiac care units, and sometimes severe valvular heart disease, and sometimes acute inflammation, or acute damage of the heart, myocarditis. Well, the risk factors for coronary artery disease are essentially sedentary lifestyle, patients who've developed obesity, who have um, diabetes, um, who've smoked, have dyslipidemia, abnormal cholesterol levels, and perhaps have high blood pressure. But more and more we're seeing heart attacks in patient populations free from those side effects. We tend to think of patients particularly from the large Indian subcontinent who come to the United States, who eat a diet that perhaps is slightly different than the diet they were uh, used to. And this group of patients would often have coronary artery disease or other complications, other cardiovascular complications, uh, without seeming to meet all the characteristic uh, risk factors we used to for coronary artery disease. Other patients might simply just carry a very positive family history. I think there's a widespread understanding that a lot of coronary artery disease risk can be modified. And I think that the modifications often are lifestyle modifications and they're not short-term diets that you make up in January with your New Year's resolution, but you need a lifestyle change. And you need to adopt this lifestyle change long-term. And I think that a non-sedentary lifestyle um, is a very important aspect of this. I think diet and exercise are probably two of the factors, prevention of obesity. I then think that the obvious things like smoking cessation are extremely important. And uh, on top of that, I think people need to be aware if they're hypertensive or not, manage their blood pressure aggressively if they are, not think they can simply diet away their hypertension. And there's no doubt at all that there are risk factors amongst patients who are unlucky enough to be dyslipidemic despite high cholesterol levels, despite these um, lifestyle modifications. The treatments become very standardized for a patient having a heart attack. We recognize now that a clot has formed, usually quite abruptly, inside a coronary artery. We have a team of physicians available, and nurses, available 24 hours a day to come in emergently and could take these patients to the cardiac catheterization laboratory, actually identify the site of the blockage where the clot's formed, and remove it uh, with, with an angioplasty technique so that blood flow is restored and the heart muscle that was dying, having a myocardial infarction because of lack of blood supply, uh, then is essentially salvaged by this technique. I think one mistake we've made as a society is not educating patients about this process and that they should immediately phone 911, get quickly to the uh, emergency rooms and get triaged into this process because time really is of the essence in terms of saving myocardium.